What's up guys? Welcome to our next kind of project that we're going to put together here. Um, it's going to be something simple. Um, don't really know what I want to call it yet, but it's just basically going to be our automated uh, hose, I guess you'd say. Automated garden hose. Maybe we'll call it that. That sounds like a good name, doesn't it? So okay, so what we're going to do to make the automated garden hose, the idea is we're going to make a adapter out of these pieces that you can hook on to your faucet at home your garden uh, hose faucet or really any faucet that has that you know that same thread pattern that a garden hose has we're basically going to take and build an adapter that we can hook on to that where we can use the good old uh, let's grab it the arduino here and we can control the flow of water and specifically we can control the time of day that it's on the day that it's on month that it's on we can control all that cool stuff using our wonderful arduino but to do that we need the actual physical components so what we'll need is to do the water controlling is you'll need one of these valves. These are actually fairly inexpensive. Uh, this one I picked up for mm, around $12 at my local hardware store. What this guy is, is this is, uh, those of you who don't know, but with sprinkler systems, those of you that have seen sprinkler systems, these are the little valves that control when the sprinkler system comes on and when it goes off. So how it works is there's a little solenoid. Let's see if I can unscrew it here. This is called this is a little solenoid here, okay. And those of you that don't know what a solenoid is, all it is is it's a it's a magnet electric electromagnetic device. And what it will do is it actually has a plunger that's inside here. And that plunger, when you pass an electric current through it, it'll suck the plunger in, which basically will open the valve. And then when you stop passing electricity through it it has a very powerful magnet inside that'll pull pull it back down or spring actually sorry spring rather that will push it back down that will then close the valve and so these two together oops hey you throw it around when we put this back together here completes our little valve assembly so this, for all intents and purposes, is our electronic valve. And like I said, these are fairly inexpensive. Pick mine up at my local hardware store. So anywhere that they sell uh, sprinkler system equipment, Rainbird or, or this Orbit or you know, all the different manufacturers of, of uh, sprinkler system equipment, you can pick one of these up. As well as you need a few fittings. Now, I've cut off of, uh, I think it was like a five foot stick, but I've cut some uh, three quarter inch PVC. Uh, that's what I've got. This is, uh, I think, Schedule 40 is what the, the white is. Schedule 40 PVC, okay? Just simple uh, three-quarter inch PVC. And this is about a foot of it. Um, I just cut a foot off. And then what I've got is some some pieces. I got some three-quarter three quarter inch uh, male uh, threaded adapters, okay? So it's three-quarters on the inside and three-quarter inch threaded male adapter and I got two of these and two of these come with this uh, this little unit and actually at least this particular one comes with both if yours doesn't come with them that's what you'll need if you choose the three-quarter inch model this is the three-quarter inch model so this inlet will match will match this inlet so these basically just screw in to your inlet Okay, and then it's even got kind of a hex head on it, so if you need to take a wrench and screw it in. However, I say don't get too crazily tight on this, otherwise you take a chance on busting the plastic. So, now, this specific one, this is metal, this actually piece, I, at least I think it's metal. Oh no, it's just hard ABS plastic. Okay, so it's a real hard plastic. But still, you can take a chance on busting your plastic connector, so don't get too crazy with it. Um, just snug will will do you. And if you need to, you can also uh, Teflon tape it if you if you have sealant problems, or put some pipe dope, some plumber's pipe dope on it if you have sealant issues. But most of the time, since it's plastic, it should seal up on its own when you when you crank it down. Now, what I've done is I've gotten a 45 degree uh, coupling here. This will allow the unit to kind of sit at an angle when it hooks on to your hose, since your hose spigot kind of comes out at an angle, it should be more or less sort of close to being level when you hook it on. So that's basically that's basically what I bought that piece for. 
Then I got one of these. What this is, is this has got a three quarter inch uh, diameter that will slide on to our pipe. See, that will slide onto the pipe. Of course, we'll glue all this up and I'll explain that in a minute. But this will slide onto our pipe, but it has, I don't know if hopefully this will come up. If you can see this, it has, it's a three, it's a three quarter inch FHT by slip. What that stands for, that means female hose, uh, Oh, I can't think of what the T stands for at the moment, <laughs> but basically it's, it's your hose fitting. It's for a standard hose fitting for like a, you know, a, a garden hose to go on to. Um, gosh, I, I can't believe I can't think of the name of the T right now. I'm drawing a blank. Well, anyway, um, you've, but it's, it's the female hose, okay? And then it's just a three quarter inch slip, so it will go on to our pipe. So that's, that's the first piece. This is the part that will actually screw and see how it, it, it free wheels. Um, this will screw on to the actual faucet, okay? So now on the other end of things, we have the same thing. Now this looks similar to one of these, but it's not. If you guys, can you see it real close? See the difference in the thread? These threads are coarser or wider apart, and these threads are what's called finer thread, which the threads are closer together. Can you see that? So what the difference is, is this will allow a garden hose to screw onto it. Basically, if pretend that this is a garden hose, this is the right thread pattern for a garden hose for it to hook onto and then make it solid, okay? And if you notice, just similar to that other one, this one says three quarter inch slip by MHT, and that's the male hose, okay? So that's what MHT means, that's the male hose portion okay so it's got the the slip fitter on one side to go on to our pipe to go onto a piece of pipe okay but then it's got the threads for a hose on the other side so that's basically all the all the pieces components you will need you will also need for the gluing you'll need two different pieces you will need a you will need a primer oops i just spilt it <laughs> well that's fun and it is very purpley yes it is very purpley but it is a purple primer okay and that's what it says, purple primer. And what this will do is this primer will actually, you know, I'll mop that up in a minute, make my mat nice and purpley. But what that will do is that will prepare the, this uh, will, will prepare this so that it will make a good bond. You purple that all up on there and then what it'll do is it'll make sure the glue has a good bond and then you'll get some medium clear PVC cement, okay? Get some cement for it and then that will tie it all together. That cement will go in there and then when you slide it on, it'll make a very firm bond. And we'll probably, I may show you guys the, the gluing up procedure for this. Gosh, I spilled that everywhere, didn't I? <laughs> well, anyway, add some color to the world. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera now and we'll uh, put all this together and um, well, I'll, I'll maybe film some of putting it together, but we'll basically put it all together and uh, then I'll show you how, how it's gonna actually work. So, we'll be back in a minute. Okay guys, well I moved out to my garage so that we can be a little more messy and it's okay. And like a, like you saw in the last video, sorry about the audio, this camera doesn't have the greatest audio in the world and my lapel mic hasn't come in yet so you'll have to just bear with it. Um, since this stuff is really nasty, I put down just kind of an old, uh, oh I don't know, an old uh, grease rag here just to catch some of it. And this glue is, is very, very, very sticky. Okay, so what I'm going to do is crack these open a little bit okay set those kind of up here out of the way I'm sorry it's out of frame but basically well here I could probably put them where you guys can see them see me getting into them all right so we got that now first things first I don't need this to be a foot long I only need just a couple of pieces okay because I need a couple of pieces over here so first I'm gonna do this piece it doesn't need to be very long so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a trusty trusty hacksaw okay that I've got and I'm gonna cut me a little piece off so we'll be back in just a second okay guys I finished cutting my little piece so I got a little piece that's gonna go in here and then go on there and that's basically how we're gonna do that so <coughs> excuse me what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our primer open up our glue here who and do this in a well ventilated area I've got doors open stuff because this is very stinky stuff it's acetone based so it's very very stinky so what I'm gonna do Avoid trying to make it big a mess as I can. All right, you're gonna take something. The primer is very liquidy, okay, and very sticky. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some primer on it. I'm gonna prime that, okay. 
let that dry for just a second. May even take and put a little primer, put a little primer in here, okay, just to just for good contrition. See, put that primer in there. Now we're gonna do do a little glue. So I'm gonna dab down the glue, let it drip a little bit, and then we're gonna put some glue around her, okay? And then we'll push her on in there. Okay. I'm gonna put it on the table and push. <clears throat> Make sure it slides on there good. Okay. Got a little glue going everywhere, so we'll kinda wipe that, wipe that up a little bit. Okay. So that's one side, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll dab on the primer get the other side going here there we go a little little primer in there why not we can be messy we're in the garage right so all right that whoo this stuff is stinky i'm not kidding you like i said do this in a well ventilated area because it is so stinky oh my goodness okay, push down on that <clears throat> get that in there all right okay so there's one piece Okay, nice and purpley. Any K-State fans out there? <laughs> Boy, it was sad to see that all the Kansas teams, I'm from Kansas by the way, all the Kansas teams got kicked out this year. It's kind of a bummer. Okay, well, while that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and work on the other sides. So we're gonna have to cut ourselves a little short piece, just the same for this, as well as a little short piece to connect this on. It's basically gonna be like this. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the camera around and cut those pieces and we'll be back in a sec. Okay guys, got ourselves a couple more pieces and boy I tell you, the, that hacksaw, I don't know, but that cobalt hacksaw is kind of crummy. I mean, it cuts things. Look at that, it looks like a parallelogram. Oh, that's crazy. Oh well, it'll still work. If you don't cut it perfectly straight like I did, I cut it just completely wacky because the blade bends on that thing. It doesn't hold it tight enough. <laughs> It's still okay. You can always get um, a uh, one of the pipe cutting tools that you squeeze. I just don't have one on me, but you can get one of those too. But I had a hacksaw. It sort of works close enough. So anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and we'll glue up this other side of things. So let's get our primer. Get some get some prime on there. Oh my heavens! It just dripped everywhere. That on there. Get some glue going. Guess we could take and. Prime the inside of where we're going. All right, put that in there. Push down on it. <clears throat> Get it all nice together. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we'll prime it again. Get our coupling. We'll just go ahead and prime both sides of that. Might as well. Now, why not? We're, we're in the priming mood. Let's prime it all. We'll even prepare this. Whoop, we're running out. Okay, a little more. Get a little bit more in there. There we go. Whew! It's a priming party. All right, let's get some glue. This all glued up, okay. Now here's gonna be the fun part, is you're gonna have to look at this thing, okay, and try to straighten it as fast as you can because it sets up quick, okay. That's about all I'm gonna get out of it because I'm not kidding you, it, it seems like this glue would stay liquidy forever because you're always getting your hands in it, but I'm not kidding you, the minute you put the primer on and then you shove that on there, it's like it's like concrete, it, it ain't coming off, so. Make sure if you have to do any straightening, you do it. You do it quick, or you make sure make preparations for for straightening it out. If you have to, you know, if it's got to go go a whole lot, or it's got to be pretty precise. Make sure you build a jig or something that's going to hold it straight. Because man, I'm not kidding you. Once you put the once you put the glue on it, it is it is a done is a done deal. Let me tell you. Oops, I didn't prime that one. Well, the other side's primed. Yeah. Win some, you lose some. Okay, now we gotta get this on here. Urgh. Okay, I'll give the good old push here, push and shove. Get her on there. Ooh, I'm gonna be shaking it all around. Oh man. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna go over here. Sorry, I'm gonna be off camera for a second. I just wanted to make sure and get that on there and I sure didn't wanna knock the camera off. So, so there we go. So there's our goofy looking apparatus all glued up and ready to go may not look pretty but trust me I, th I think it'll work just fine nonetheless so I'm gonna go ahead and let that glue set and what we're gonna do is we will then look at how we are going to uh, probably wire this puppy up if not I may do the uh, 
I may do the code next, just depends on how the time works out, but I may may do put the hardware video or yeah, hardware video on that shows you how to hook everything up and wire it all and then uh, and then we'll get into some software. So that's quick and dirty how to throw that together and that's basically the first piece. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, here we are with our hardware design portion of our project here. So what we're going to look at is how to hook up our RTC or real-time clock along with our MOSFET transistor that's going to be controlling our uh, solenoid as well as the power supply that's going to run everything so that way we don't have to keep it plugged in USB to our computer. So I'm using the Arduino. Um, in this picture I'm using it's showing the Arduino Uno uh, revision 3. Actually I'm going to be using the Leonardo is the one that I have but basically what you have to make sure is that your Arduino has the SCL and the SDA which is uh, the serial clock and serial data lines that is used for uh, I squared C communication because that is the chip that we will be using and speaking of the chip that we'll be using uh, we will be using the DS 1307 which is the Dallas semiconductor 1307 uh, which now is owned by Maxim technology so it's Maxim's chip uh, and it is an RTC, a real-time clock. Those of you that don't know what real-time clocks are, I'll go through it very quickly. Um, a real-time clock basically is a clock that will keep track of time, but it will keep track of hours, minutes, and seconds, as well as it has a calendar register that will keep track of months, days, and even years. Um, it'll also do, if I remember right, it'll also do uh, days of the week. So it'll do Sunday through Saturday as well. So it has separate registers for each piece. Uh, it runs on a 24 hour clock and is actually very, very useful when you're wanting to keep track of, like I said, days, weeks, months, you know, um, hours, minutes, and seconds. Instead of dealing with microseconds and things like that, if you need hours and whatnot, these are a very accurate uh, tool to use or an RTC. A lot of microcontrollers will come with them on board. Um, this, apparently the Atmel processor that they've chosen for the Arduino doesn't, at least for the Leonardo, does not have an RTC on it. You can purchase an RTC shield uh, from Adafruit, I believe, or in different places will actually have the... Uh, the shield that's uh, basically a little PCB that's already got all the components on it that you need. It just plugs in to the header on the Arduino and then you can use it. For this demo, I'm going to show you how to build that even. So I'm going to show you how to put it all together, literally from the component level. I'm going to show you how to put this all together. So what I've done, the reason I have a dashed box here is that I'm saying on separate board is those of you that don't know, they make, you know, perf board is what I call it, which is a perforated board. It has uh, holes drilled in it that are basically on a tenth inch by tenth inch uh, grid pattern and then they each have on the bottom of the board e each hole will have what's called an annular ring or basically a solder pad that's around each hole so that way you can poke stuff through the board and solder it down that's basically what we're going to be using to build this I'll be showing a video that shows literally the physical hardware of all this stuff so not to worry you'll get to see what it looks like when it's finished but uh, for right now, just to get a, get our minds around, since the, you know wiring it up, it just gets real messy uh, on those boards. I want to show you a good clean uh, wiring diagram of this, so I drew a good uh, schematic for you guys. Anyway, what we've got is, like I said, we've got the serial clock and serial data lines, which is uh, the I squared C bus, I squared C protocol is what uh, the Dallas Semiconductor 1307 uses. So here's how this basically sort of works. You've got your uh, VCC and VDD or VCC and ground, whatever you want to call it, but your power and ground. So, And this chip I believe will run on 3.3. Um, I just chose 5 volt because that's the stuff I had laying around. So, um, But I believe it will run on 3.3 volts. But anyway, I chose 5 volts for power and then of course we got our ground here on the ground pin. It uses an external crystal uh, oscillator that's going to be used. The one that we'll be picking will be a 32.768 kilohertz. Uh, the this is what is the key to all of this how accurate this is I was actually asked a question about that uh, recently but how accurate this guy is is all based on this crystal how accurate is that crystal is it laser trimmed is it you know uh, how accurate is the crystal that you put on also what is the capacitive trimming that's on it uh, these have uh, 
capacitances associated with them. And if you read in the DS1307 data sheet, it'll tell you uh, recommended capacitances and things like that. It'll tell you, uh, you know, if you want supreme accuracy, what's the best way to go about it and what to look for when you're selecting a crystal for it. So anyway, that is basically what uh, the crystal is for, is that is the main timekeeping element of this. The other two, the other few pieces that are out here are, since the I squared C bus is done based on an open collector design, you will need two pull up resistors uh, for it to work right. And these resistors, it is very picky, it's very peculiar, it needs a specific amount of current to drive, uh, too much or too little, uh, too little it may not work properly, too much you could actually damage the uh, IC. So. Uh, 3.9K is right where you need to be. That's what's recommended in the data sheet. I've experimented with that. You can do 3.3K, even, th uh, let's see, whatever, one that's closer to 3K. You can you can kind of vary that a little bit, but don't get you know too crazy with it. I know a 4.7K is way too much. It won't work properly. It just, the, the signal there is just not enough current there to drive the... Uh, basically open collector circuitry that's inside this guy it there's just not enough current to make it work right so you'll get weird results sometimes the time won't even increment you'll get garbled information stuff like that um, and it, like I said if it's too small if you do like you know a hundred ohm or something like that you could take a chance on pushing way too much current through this guy and actually burning it so you want to be careful with your resistor selection and like I said just get some 3.9k resistors or 3.3 if, if you can and that'll work just fine now the next piece uh, is actually an optional piece, but uh, I highly recommend it, is adding a three volt coin cell battery to this guy. What this is for, you just add it to the VBAT pin to ground. What this is for is basically it's your backup battery. You know, like your, your alarm clock will have, you know, you can put a couple AA batteries in it, and if the power goes out, it will still remember the time. Same, same clue, if I take, if this five volts gets removed, whatever reason, then this three volt coin cell battery that you hook up will actually keep the oscillator running and keep the oscillating circuitry going and it'll still keep the time for you. It uses a very low powered mode to do that so it doesn't you know just eat this battery. So anyway, you can hook a battery up. This is totally optional, however. The fun this chip will function perfectly fine without the battery. You can actually just leave this pin open, not connect anything to it, just float that pin. And it will still operate just fine. However, like I said, if you remove the five volts from it for whatever reason, it will lose the time that you've set using the Arduino. So there's there it is. So whatever you want whatever you want to do. If you want to leave it in not or not, it's whatever. I went ahead and added it to our board so you can see how to connect it up or at least see what I'm talking about. Um, for this intensive purposes I won't be using it because I'll just set the time just to show you guys how this works. But for for future um, you can put a three volt coin cell on there and it'll keep track of the time. Now since our solenoid operates off a of 24 volt uh, we need to do something with that because our Arduino doesn't operate off 24 volt and neither does the uh, RTC that we're using. So we need to do something with that. We're going to take the 24 volt that we're going to bring in via like a wall wart is what we call them, but those little wall transformers, you know, you plug it into the wall, the big plug-ins that then give you 24 volt DC um, will probably ultimately be what I, I would recommend using in this project. But I think for this, I don't have one of those laying around, so I'll be using my uh, bench power supply. But the 24 volts needs to come into a voltage regulator. Now, the one that I've chosen is a tried and true, very good one. It's a linear voltage regulator. Um, it's the LM7805 uh, voltage regulator. You can find these anywhere. Um, I even think the you know Arduino website has them and whatnot. I mean, everybody has these. These are very, like I said, tried and true. They're all, you can get them in a TO220 package, uh, which is a one amp device, and then the TO92 package, oh, don't quote me. I think it's maybe quarter amp or if not a half amp, maybe. I think it's quarter amp though. Uh, 0.25 uh, amps or 250 milliamps is what the T TO92 case is, which is a smaller uh, regulator. But for this intensive purposes, I'll be using the TO220, which is a one amp device. It has a voltage range of 30 volts to five volts. So our 24 volts is plenty within that range and it'll regulate down to five volts. You need an input and an output decoupling capacitor just to make sure everything stays nice and clean and, and non-noisy. And then that generates our five volts that we will then drive our clock with as well as we'll pull that five volts 
Um, and I'll have to show it to you. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm pulling that five volts off into a connector that will plug into the Arduino. Since the Arduino has that nice uh, barrel connector that's on it that you can plug in, you know, a, you know, like a little power supply or something into it. That's what we're going to be using. Um, I've made up a connector. We'll be pulling the five volts from this regulator into the Arduino. And like I said, you'll see that in the video where I show you all the hardware and the physical stuff that's put together. Now, on the second hand, we need to be able to uh, switch the solenoid. So for that, we're going to use the IRF 510, which is a very tried and true power MOSFET that's made by the International Rectifier Corporation. Um, what we're going to be doing, I think that one's like a, it's a pretty beefy one. I think it's like, you know, five amp or so. Well, don't quote me. I don't have the data sheet in front of me. It's, it's more than an amp. It's, it's quite a, it's quite a hefty guy. And I think it can handle 50 volts or 30 volts or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, yeah. Forgive me. I don't have the data sheet in front of me, but basically it's a beefy one. It'll, it'll take care of anything. Uh, the solenoid can throw at you except for voltage flyback, which is a characteristic inherent of solenoidal devices. And that's what this diode, this 1N4007 is for. What happens, like I said, if you want, if you really want to know this, I'm trying to make this video short. Um, it's probably not going to be very short, but still, <clears throat> if you want to know more about what I'm about to explain, you can check out my relay video. If you go to my channel at uh, youtube.com slash misperry, you can check out uh, my relay video and I describe exactly how all this happens. But basically what you need to know is when actuating solenoidal devices like an actual solenoid, which is in our uh, water... <clears throat> uh, uh, water valve, sorry, um, that has a solenoid on it, or if you're actuating relays that are of any size, that have a pretty good size, you know, coil on them, then you're going to run into this problem. What happens is when you de-energize a relay or a solenoid device, what will happen is it will have a tendency to spike the voltage, and that's just a characteristic inherent to them. And like I said, if you want to know exactly how, check out my relay video. I explain uh, exactly why that does that. But to to stop that from burning up your uh, transistor, because it will, it'll actually burn the transistor, um, is you put this blocking diode in. And this blocking diode will stop that voltage uh, from spiking, is what happens. <clears throat> and yes, you can see that there's like a little zener on here. Don't rely on these uh, little zeners. All power MOSFETs will show that they have this. What it is, is it's due to the construction of the MOSFET. It just is basically inherently built in when they manufacture the the silicon it's just a characteristic of it but don't rely on that to be a good buffer they're usually very weak inside because like i said it's just kind of a stray thing that happens during the manufacturing process but since it is there they show it in you know circuit element depictions and whatnot so always put a blocking diode and a good one is a 1n4007 i think it's like a I think it's like a thousand volt rated or something like that. It's a, it's a pretty beefy uh, diode and it's not very large either. So it's, it's a good bet. Tried and true. Then we also have our 100K bleeding resistors. Those of you that don't know uh, about MOSFETs, MOSFETs have another thing inherent to their construction, how they're made. Uh, they have a very large gate capacitance. Well, that capacitance can stay around and keep a voltage around basically. <clears throat> So essentially when you turn it off, it may not shut off immediately. When you turn it off, it takes a while for that capacitance to bleed off. So what we're doing is we're just pulling uh, the gate to ground through a 100K resistor that's making sure that it ensures a good sharp uh, turn off of the, of the FET. So that's what that's doing. So when we turn it off, it shuts off, you know, uh, at the instant we turn it off. That's what we're doing. You can go lower if you want. It's just one thing that's really nice about MOSFETs is they draw... I, I, I want to say zero, but it's not really zero. It's very, very tiny, but it's not zero. But uh, for all intents and purposes, books will tell you that it draws zero current on the gate. Um, like I said, it's very, very tiny. It's like nano amps, and sometimes it's even lower than that. It's pico amps. But still, it, it draws something, but it's very, very tiny on the gate. Well, if you get this bleeding resistor down to only like 100 ohms or something, then now you're going to be drawing drawing some current out of your Arduino or out of whatever device you're driving it with. You're going to be drawing it through that bleeding resistor. So you want to keep the bleeding resistor fairly high because this capacitance is going to be very tiny. It's going to be the order of pico, if not femto, uh, farads. So it's going to be very tiny. So you don't need a huge resistor or, you know, or, I mean, you don't need a very tiny resistor. You need something that's fairly good size. Keep your currents all in check. 
And that's basically it for the hardware. I'll make sure and uh, commonly ground. You need to take one of the grounds on the Arduino, which, like I said, I'll show you when I build the connector that powers this, the grounds are tied together. But you want the grounds of the Arduino to be connected to the grounds in your little... Uh, I guess we'd call it a daughter board, I guess you could call it. You want the grounds here to be the same as the grounds of your Arduino, otherwise it will not turn on correctly, it will not keep time correctly, it will not work right if you don't have the grounds all common to each other. So that's another gotcha. <clears throat> anyway, hopefully guys, uh, this has been... Uh, a quick rundown of this hopefully it hasn't been too long but this is a quick rundown of the hardware we'll step into the software in the next video thanks okay guys welcome back to uh, the coding section of our Arduino I'm gonna go through how to code this up um, like I said uh, I, well I don't know if I've said this or not but all of my those of you that don't know um, everybody that's been to my channel knows but uh, for all my projects I have, if you go visit my channel at youtube.com slash misperry, uh, I have a project code link. It's on my banner. It's at the bottom right hand side. And when you click on it, it takes you to a repository that has all the code and drawings, hardware drawings for every single, uh, project that I do and that I have videos for and so you can go there and download this this will be the same I'll upload this sketch along with the uh, wiring diagram that I showed you in the past video I'll be uploading all of that to my project code link right after I uh, put this video up so if you uh, want to download this code and actually look at it if for some reason you can't get high enough resolution to be able to see uh, what I'm talking about here or whatnot however I think I've got the font big enough you should be able to see it but just in case you can't you can always download the code there and uh, also the wiring diagram if you want so anyway youtube.com forward slash mi sperry and click on in the lower right hand corner of my uh, banner there's the project code link click on that and you'll be able to uh, download the code from uh, the repository anyway um, first things first we need to do our includes we need to include the wire library we also need to include this rtclib.h now you can download this uh, from many different places just just look for DS, just google ds1307 uh, arduino and you'll find that there's a library called the rtclib underscore master library and when you download that you'll download it, it comes as a zip um, if you check out my uh, I've got another video on just the RTC with the Arduino that covers uh, a lot of stuff with uh, that's about the RTC and the Arduino and I talk about this here and I show you how to go get it and download it and all that stuff I'll probably put a link in the description here just so you uh, have the link to go get the get the deal but you basically extract it you come if you're if you're a uh, Windows user you come to uh, your Windows platform I'll bring a window over show you but you come over to um, your documents and inside your documents should be an Arduino folder if you've installed the Arduino IDE and then there'll be a libraries folder and that's where you put the contents of the zip file you go ahead and extract your zip file you'll get these two files you get a readme and this RTC LIB master file but you put it in this Arduino libraries if you're running a Linux machine um, I can't remember where the root folder is but it's in the root folder the root install I think it's under USR uh, it's uh, I think it's forward slash slash USR slash bin maybe I don't know I, I can't remember it's been it's been a while I've installed this on Linux and I use it but I've, I forgot where it's actually at but I think it's in the USR directory it's either USR and then Arduino and then libraries or it's USR bin and then Arduino and libraries I don't remember but under Linux basically find your root folder uh, find Arduino find and then libraries will be in there and you just drop it uh, right in there is where you drop the contents of that zip and when you do to test to make sure that uh, the IDE finds it if you open up your IDE go to file go to the examples you should see it in your examples there should be examples for it so you know that it's it's linked up properly you can just type in include and then under quotes type in the name of the header file and it should include all the stuff that you need for the RTC so having said that, we're going to uh, declare, it's all class driven, which is very nice. Uh, the person that designed this was uh, very good at, uh, at coding and everything else. They did a very good job of building this uh, library. So anyway, you call out the RTC DS1307 class and you, you call a class variable RTC. 
We're also going to set up pin 13 as output. I just chose pin 13. You could choose whatever digital pin you want to choose in your Arduino, but I just chose pin 13. We're going to set that up as our uh, pin that we're going to use to trigger the uh, MOSFET to actuate the solenoid on the water valve. I'm also going to call a day of the week um, variable just so we can have a, and these are all set variables these are settings for you um, I can have uh, a day of the week uh, that I can that I like maybe I want to run this uh, on Mondays or Tuesdays or Wednesdays or Thursday Friday whatever whatever uh, I set up a day of the week variable for this example zero is Sunday six is Saturday so that's how it goes so zero is Sunday one is Monday two when Tuesday three Wednesday four Thursday, so on and so forth. Okay, until you get up to six, six is Saturday. Okay, I'm gonna put a start time. I've called uh, variables called s hour, s min, and s second for um, the start time of it. When do I want it to turn the sprinkler on? And then I've got an ending time, e hour, e min, and e second, which is obviously then the ending time when I want it to turn it back off. Okay. We're going to get into our void setup menu. We're going to come in here and we're going to set up our serial. That's what we needed the wire uh, library for. We're going to set up serial so that way we can uh, kind of have a little bit of a debug, got to have some eyes into how it's working that will print the time out to the serial line so that way you can see what time it's working with. We're going to call the rtc.begin, which will send the I squared C command to turn the RTC on, start it running. We do a simple little check with an if statement. We check the rtc.isrunning uh, to see if it's if it's on. If it's not, then we're going to print out to the to the uh, serial line that it's not running. Okay. Then we're going to take and go down here, if it, thinking that everything is working properly. We're going to do we're going to set the time. We're going to do an rtc.adjust. We're going to use the date and time function, and we're going to put in the year, the month, the day. Then we put in the hour, the minute, and the seconds. Okay, and I've just chosen arbitrary, arbitrary, arbitrary. That's it's late. Uh, chose a uh, arbitrary uh, time, essentially, because uh, for the my demo that I'm showing, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, but for you, you'll put in your actual time and then, you know, you could set up cooler stuff with this, you know, and have this where maybe it prints it to the screen and then you can, it'll ask you and you can type the time in or whatever, you know, whatever you want to do for, for now, we're just, I'm just showing you how to generically do this. So you guys can take it and run with it. All right. So we're going to go ahead and set up our pin 13 as output. So we're going to set up our activate pin as output. That way it sets it as a digital, uh, pin, a digital output pin. Now we're going to get into our main loop. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to call the time. We're going to declare a variable that's of the type date and time, uh, which is defined in that uh, rtclib.h file. Uh, we're going to call it now, and we're going to set it equal to our RTC class dot now, which will actually send the I squared C uh, request to the Dallas Semiconductor for the time, and it will bring it back. <clears throat> now. We will go ahead and print all of this out. We're going to use the now variable that we declared, the class variable we declared, and we're going to use now.year. We'll display the year. Now.month is the month, so on for day, hour, minute, and seconds, so on and so forth. So that's how that's going to work. Now, if you wanted to, you can do a dot, uh, as we'll see later, you, you can do a dot day of week, and it'll print the, the number that corresponds to the day of the week. Okay. So now what we're going to do is now we need to check to see if it's time to turn it on or if it's time to turn it off. So that's what uh, this if down here is for. First off, we're going to check to see if it's time. So we're going to say we're going to check to see if the now.minute is equal to our start minute and the now.hour is equal to our start hour and the now.second is equal to our start second and it's the day of the week that we want it on. So that's all anded together. We're going to check the, the minute, the hour, the second, and the day of the week is at least in this example this is what I'm checking for. You could be you know doing what month maybe you want it, certain things come on different month maybe you want your sprinkler system your sprinkler to rest during the winter. And so you have it where it'll only come on in a certain month range. You know just whatever you want to do, you know with this just code whatever you need to code. But for this example we're just doing a certain time. And then we're going to do a digital write, activate and send a high. So what this does is this sets the pin high, pin 13, to a high. So basically puts five volts out there, which will turn our MOSFET on, which then should close in the uh, solenoid and actuate the water valve and turn the water on. Similarly, we're going to check to see if it's time to turn it off. So we're going to check to see if it's 
all that stuff. Basically, it's the same deal, except it's with our E minute variable, which is our end minute, our end hour, our end second, and our day of the week variable. Okay, so we're gonna check all that. And if so, we're gonna output a low and basically spit out a zero, which will turn the end channel MOSFET off and we'll shut our sprinkler off basically by closing the water valve. We're gonna delay, uh, we're gonna print a new line uh, just to make everything look pretty in our serial output, but then we're going to delay a second and then we'll do this all over again. So every second it's going to check and it's gonna print the time every second. So you should see it incrementing in the serial menu and this little serial monitor is a fantastic tool to use if you have it hooked up USB. So guys, that's basically it. Sorry if it took way too long, but I wanted to make sure and give you guys an in-depth description of what all is going on and how to wire it and how to uh, code it. So now that we've got that all over with, I'll get to show you the, the unit itself and then we'll go take it outside and we'll test it out. So stay tuned for that. I'm um, gonna switch cameras and I'll show you the main unit itself. Thanks a lot. Okay guys, what's going on? Here we are with our hardware, uh, I guess, hookup. What I did was I uh, got a little box. I actually, here, hold on, let me, let me get another one. I actually got these little boxes. I have these little boxes that are a Hammond enclosure. I'll show you what it looks like. It's this uh, Hammond Manufacturing, it's a 1591 XXMBK is the, is the box that I am using. Uh, it's just one of these little, uh, just like a little project box. Um, it comes with a lid and uh, even comes with some screws and stuff. One th good thing is that it has mounting holes in it for mounting circuit boards and stuff too. So it's a pretty good little box. You can pick these up from uh, Allied Electronics, Newark, a whole bunch of different places. Um, you can check my, uh, my uh, website or uh, YouTube channel. You can check out my YouTube channel and if you go to my channel and click on about you can get to uh, all the links that I have and it shows a whole bunch of distributors that uh, have these as well as electronic components and everything else that you need. So anyway let's go ahead and check this out. Basically what I've done is I just took the lid off the box and I've just kind of wedged the Arduino inside of this little box is what I've done. Okay now if we're going to look at this I'm going to unplug this for now. This is that power connector that I was telling you guys all about uh, that I made uh, to plug into our Arduino. So like I said, I've got the Leonardo is what I've got. Now if I pop this loose, I can probably tilt it up and you can see underneath, see the little circuit board underneath. So that's what I've done. I screwed it down. You can see the screw in there. Um, so I can get the light in there. Um, I've screwed it down. But as you can see, there's the battery, uh, the little battery deal. You can put a battery in that. This is our uh, MOSFET. That's why they've, it's got a wire hanging off of it. That will, this wire will connect up to our uh, solenoid. Then you've also got back in the back, I don't know if you can see that, but down in there, there's a uh, voltage regulator. If you can see that, I don't know if you can. The voltage regulator is right down there. See it in there? So there's the LM7805 voltage regulator. Okay, that guy, and that's what uh, these two wires are for. This is the two wires that will hook up to the 24 volt power supply. They power that up. Then from that voltage regulator, I have our five volt power, okay? So the black is the ground. Okay, so basically that's what this is. This has got the five volt uh, wire. I'll use yellow for the five volt and then black is the ground to hook up one of these little guys. Basically this housing unscrews and you can solder the wires onto it. And that's basically what I made was that little barrel connector right there. So then inside, if we look uh, a little bit deeper, uh, let's see if I can get the light. My lights, my lights over here. So um, there's the DS1307, there's it. There's the two resistors for the uh, clock and data. And as you can see, there's the, there's the wires for it. So that's the clock and data. They come up and plug in to get some light on here. As you can see, there's the SCL and the SDA. That's where those plug in, okay? So that's coming from there. And I don't know if you can see it. I have to hold it at an angle so you can get the light on it. But see the little crystal? I don't know if you can see that. That little tiny silver barrel looking thing that's down there. That's the uh, crystal oscillator that's in there for the, uh, to set the, set the time. So anyway, so like I said, all I did was I just basically, this little case is about perfect for the, the, uh, the Arduino I took and just kind of wedge it down in there and that's basically it. And then we'll take and plug this in. Let's get this out of the way. Plug this in 
And then basically what we do is we'll put 24 volts on these wires and then that will power our Arduino board and that way we don't have to have a, uh, the USB connector plugged in. So that's basically the, uh, the hardware guys of this little guy. I'll, uh, in the next video we'll go ahead and we'll take this stuff outside, hook it up to my faucet and we'll uh, wire it all up and we'll demo how our little automated garden hose or automated sprinkler, whatever you want to call it, how it works. So there we go, we'll be back in just a second. Okay guys, we are now outside. We've got it good and installed. So right here, sorry about the audio. Like I said, I'm just using the camera microphone right now, but this actually leaking that you're seeing here, all this water, that's actually coming from my faucet. My faucet actually leaks around the deal. I think the seal's probably gone. But anyway, so we got good seals everywhere. Seems like the actual unit isn't leaking. What's actually dripping is that, that faucet piece. But basically here we go. I've put my hose on it here and just kind of sat the Arduino inside the little tool holder in the hose casing. So what we got going on is I've got uh, the MOSFET, remember this is the negative, or at least the drain of the MOSFET, is connected to one side of our solenoid. This other side of the solenoid is connected to the positive, this is the positive coming from my power supply, is connected to the positive as well as the positive for the regulators connected there as well, okay? So you need the positive of the regulator and one side of your solenoid to attach to the positive lead. And then the other side of the solenoid goes to that drain of your MOSFET, okay, which is this little wire that I've brought out from our little board in there, okay? So that's, that's how we hook that up. Then, of course, we just take the ground wire, that black wire I had, the ground wire from the regulator, and hook it to our black ground that goes back to our power supply. And like I said, I'm just using my bench top power supply, that's what I'm using for right now. You can go ahead and wire this up if you just buy a simple 24 volt power supply, you know, that like we call it a wall wart, the one that plugs into the wall then that'll work uh, just fine. You can cut the end of it off, splice it out, and then do like I did with a wire, uh, wire nut here and wire nut it all up. But for all intents and purposes, I'm just using my bench top power supply. Anyway, so I'll plug this in here in just a second. Um, I will uh, show you what I've got going on here. I built, just for this, follow our hose out here. My kids got their, uh, oh, they got their toys out here. Anyway, um, I built this little apparatus. Basically what it is, just a single uh, Rainbird sprinkler, okay, attached through PVC, kind of the same method that we used before, and then I just put a hose adapter on it. So you got this little hose attachment that's right here. So anyway, so that's gonna be our sprinkler. Now the beauty of this is you could hook anything to this. I just, I have a sprinkler system, so I didn't have, I don't have like little sprinklers laying around, uh, garden sprinklers and stuff that I could use. Uh, otherwise I'd probably use one of those. But uh, anyway, you'll be able to see how this, how this works. So let's, let's go back and we'll power it up. And one question that I have for anybody that's played with Arduinos um, more than me, is I don't know why the Arduino will always uh, blink all the GPIO pins when it's starting up. I do not know why it does that. Uh, if there's an option or something that stops that from happening, please uh, leave a comment or something, let me know how to do that. I don't know how to stop that outside of put like a latch in between or something like that that'll they'll stop it from doing that because what happens is it'll actually oscillate this, uh, this solenoid, which isn't exactly good, but Anyway, but I guess it's only at startup, so I guess once you have the system up and running, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. So, but anyway, just just kind of a note. So I'm gonna plug it in, power it up. So now it's gonna power up. Um, it'll turn it on for a brief second and then shut it back off. Like I said, that's that Arduino like startup thing. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna wait about 30 seconds, and we should come on. You could hook up the USB to monitor this, but. Uh, but anyway, but we'll probably just, we'll just sit here and we'll wait on it. So it's going to be 30 seconds, the way we set up the program. I'm running the same software that I was running before. So 30 seconds, uh, it should kick on our sprinkler here. And, uh, and then 20 seconds later, it should shut it back off. So got a beautiful day out here. Spring day, got some trees blooming over there. Oh, there it is. So there's the 30 second interval. So now it's on. So our, our, our uh, solenoid actuated. So now this should give us about 20 seconds worth of water and it'll shut back off. Now it looks like there's a little air in the line. So our sprinklers are working and I just heard it click and there it goes back off. All right guys, there it is working. There it is wired up and working. So 
that's all there is to it. Uh, fairly simple. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, we'll go over the connections one more time. Um, I got the, uh, the drain of the MOSFET goes to one side of the solenoid, okay? And the other side of the solenoid will go to the positive lead, as well as I'm just wiring in the positive lead of the regulator as well in here, so they're both together. And then I've got the negative side of the uh, board and of the regulator hooked up here so we can power up our Arduino. And as you can see, we got, let's see if I can zoom in. There we go, see, we got the power on light, so things all powered up and good to go. So anyway, um, that's basically our automated sprinkler. How cool is that? All right, guys, thanks for watching. I know this has been a very long video, but thanks for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. Check out uh, the t-shirts. Actually, I'm, I'm wearing one, but check out the t-shirts at uh, zazzle.com forward slash uh, M.I. Sperry. Also, check out the magicsmoke.proboards.com. I've been trying to post uh, more uh, kind of like news-related things and whatever I run across. I'm kind of using that as kind of a bulletin board, as well as if we could get a community going, would be great. That way, if any of you guys have questions and I'm not available to answer them, maybe uh, all of us collectively can answer questions together. So, be an awesome deal. All right, guys. Well, you can follow me on Instructables, Twitter. I use Twitter to post new videos, post different things I find, silly things that I find. So you can follow me on Twitter. I'm Twitter slash uh, M.I. Sperry E.E. -E. Uh, follow me there and push the subscribe button. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care and keep on coding and building.